The difference between a bland video and a great one is smaller than you think. Imagine your video is like this steak. I could go throw this on the grill right now and eat it as it is. It would be edible, but it wouldn't be great. However, if I took a few seconds and added a sprinkle of salt and pepper, suddenly this is a dish that you could find in a fancy steakhouse. In this video, I'm gonna teach you the video equivalent of salt and pepper that will transform your videos from bland into a five-star experience. Let's start by adding our salt. Let me introduce you to a guy named Ken. Ken Burns is an award-winning filmmaker. Ken makes documentaries about subjects like the Civil War. Because his subjects come from a time before video, in most cases, the only visual source material he has for building the story are still photographs. Now, this caused a problem for Ken. It's really boring to just flip through photo after photo. So what did Ken do? He pioneered a technique of slowly zooming and panning across still photographs to give them movement. Now, this technique is named after him, the Ken Burns effect, it's called. The Ken Burns effect is included as a feature in Descript and many other video editing softwares. And like the salt on our steak, it can be a huge level up in turning something boring into something much more interesting. So how can we use it? Here I am inside of my Descript project, and I'm gonna apply my Ken Burns effect to this image of Abraham Lincoln. Now, the first thing I wanna point out is that this isn't gonna work as it currently is. So normally, if I go over to this image on the left side here, and I come to animation, there's the Ken Burns icon. That's how it should look. So again, that's the layer property. And then at the bottom, there is this animation button. And you click on that, and there's the Ken Burns option. If I go back to my Lincoln one, notice that when I click the plus button, there's no Ken Burns option. The reason for that is that this layer is currently in the script layer. So what I need to do, if you're not seeing the Ken Burns button, first of all, make sure that you have an image. Second of all, make sure that you right click and say remove from script. And now it pops it up into a layer above the script. And now when I go to animation, there it is. And if you're lost on anything that I just went over right there, I highly recommend check out the Descript Mastery School. That's my course and community where you'll learn all things Descript and you'll learn to master this software in 90 days. If I click on this Ken Burns button, that applies the effect to this image. You notice it just zoomed in a bit and it randomly chooses a direction. So with the Ken Burns, you can choose directions. You can do up and to the left, up and to the middle, up and to the right, etc., or just center, have it centered. And then you choose zoom. Do you want it to zoom in or do you want it to zoom out or do you want it to just pan across with the none option there? So if I choose a right arrow, say none. Now it's just going to pan without zooming. And then your third option is speed, slow, moderate, or fast. I'm going to choose slow. I'm going to choose Lincoln is kind of the, the key guy here. So I'm going to have it, the camera pan to the left. So I'm going to choose this left center arrow and I'm going to have it zoom in. And then to preview this, I can click on this little play button right here and that's gonna preview this animation. It has just that little bit of motion to make this image a lot more interesting. Now our steak is tasting much better with our salt. Let's add some pepper to it to really take it to the next level. One of your goals when you're making videos is to draw the viewer's attention to the place you want to draw it. Think of it like a web page. When you're designing a web page, you put the most important information right at the top in the biggest text. You use size and color and shapes to guide the visitor down the page and focus them on the things you want them to focus on. When it comes to video, shapes in particular are one of the biggest tools in the editor's tool belt to control the focus of your viewer. For example, if I'm giving a tutorial and I say, click on this button, which button am I talking about? There's about 20 different buttons on the screen, so it's confusing for the viewer. But if I say, click on this button and a big red box appears around the button, now it's super clear what I want the viewer to do and where to focus their attention. So how can you add shapes to your video? Here we are inside of our Abe video once again. And to add shapes is fairly straightforward. You come over to the elements button on the right side, click on that. And you see right next to it, there's this section called basic. And these are your shapes and they are exactly how they look. So you have a triangle, a circle, 
And these are hollow, by the way. And then the ones below them are filled in. So hollow square, filled in square, arrow, or straight line. So let's add uh, this one. Let's add the this hollow square. So there it is. I clicked on it, and it put that layer into my project. And you see it added a layer called rectangle. As well as up here on the video itself, it is now here. And I can grab the edges to resize it. So I can reshape it like that, grab the left side, make it smaller, clicking and dragging in, or I can grab the corners to resize it proportionally. And then in the menu that's above it with this layer selected, and I know it's selected because it has this blue bar around it. If it's not, if I click away, you can see it just looks like that. And if I click again into it, then now it's selected again with that blue bar around it. And when it's selected, this menu pops up over it. And this first thing that you see here is your opacity and your fill color. So this white circle is your fill color. And this pulls up this color swatch where you can drag this around and you can make it red, for example. You could change the opacity. You could even enter your own hex code. Maybe you have some brand colors or the color of your logo. And you have an eyedropper tool, so you can match it to another color, like in the case of a logo. Um, but I'm going to go with red, and I'm going to hit this X arrow to lock that change in. And that's the gist of adding our shape. I can then drag this around, and let's say I want to call attention to something that is on Abe's table there. I could just create that little red box around it. And if you want to animate this red square so that it wipes in or slides in or does some other motion, then check out the video in the top right to learn about animations. Now that our steak is nicely seasoned, we got to cook this thing. Let's add some sizzle to our steak. We have five senses, and the more we can engage those, the more that you as the editor can engage the senses of your viewer, that is, the more invested in the video your viewer will be. The sizzle on your steak is to add some sound effects to our video. Without it, the experience is a bit flat and lacking. Let me show you two videos. This is the same video, but I want you to tell me which one is more interesting. Looks fine, right? But something is missing. Okay, now I'm hungry. You see the difference adding a sound effect makes? Fortunately, Descript comes with a giant library of built-in sound effects. It has almost everything you can imagine. So how do you find them and add them to your project? Here I am in Descript, and here is the video of my steak. And it's a slow motion video, so it has no sound with it. It's just panning across this steak. Pretty boring, pretty lacking without the sound. So what I'm going to do to fix this is come right here to this button that says stock. Click on that and it opens up this section with stock media. This first tab up here at the top is all my visual stock media. If I go next to that to the right, there's audio and I have my music. But what I'm really looking for is down here, my sound effects. But rather than scroll through a giant library of sound effects, I'm going to come up to this search bar at the very top, and I'm going to type in sizzle. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to come down once again to the sound effects box. I'm going to hit this show all button, and here is a bunch of different sizzle options, dozens of them. And I can read the little description of what these are, so frying meat looping. That sounds like it could be promising. It's 45 seconds long. And if I hit this play button, I can preview what it sounds like. Beautiful, that's gonna work perfect. So when I find the sound effect I like, I can just hit this little plus button and that's gonna add it to my project. And now I can see this new green sound layer that is my sizzling sound. And I'm gonna go ahead and play this. Now your steak is tasting delicious, but the best steak in the world does you no good if your audience is a bunch of vegetarians. Metaphorically speaking, of course, no offense to vegetarians. Click on this video next to learn about adapting your editing style to your audience.